Wow, what a week. So earlier this week, President Trump indicated his support for something called red flag laws. What a week. Representative Dan Crenshaw, President Trump putting his support behind red flag laws. Let's go to exactly what Representative Dan Crenshaw is referring to. Fourth, we must make sure that those judged to pose a grave risk to public safety do not have access to firearms, and that if they do, those firearms can be taken through rapid due process. Rapid due process. Rapid due process. Now, Representative Dan Crenshaw leaves that out. We're going to go through his entire tweet, but listen a little bit further. That is why I have called for red flag laws, also known as extreme risk protection orders. Extreme risk protection orders. Now, you know I've covered this last week. You saw the video. Trump, no, the red flags are coming. The red flags are coming. Well, I was the first of many to voice severe dismay and adding to the backlash that President Trump and Representative Dan Crenshaw felt. Now, before we go any further, it got much worse. Crenshaw had to come out and put an entire tweet about how we're just not smart enough to basically understand what he means by red flag laws. I'm going to play the clip in its entirety. And to say I had started to turn away last week, well, now I've done a complete 180 away from all these turncoats at this point. There is just no other way to put it. But before we do, again, if you haven't subscribed yet to justicesaynight.com, please do. You saw yesterday, right now indicated by the yellow arrow. Occasionally, I'll even throw just a, a word or two out there. Um, what happened over the weekend as the Clinton body count continues to grow. Of course, I want to I wanna put some, some focus on that. I think it's important you know exactly what's happening. That's why I need you to subscribe to the website. Just below there is my donation portal. Absolutely critical. I have something in the works uh, that is so magnificent, so large, and will change the way you get your news. It's going to be, it's going to astound you, but that does require support to make sure that happens. And then my, again, my alternate platform each week, this week is Parlor. I need more of you to get over there. More of us and all of us have to exit Facebook. We have to exit Twitter. It's not It's not if. We have to. If you want real news, and I'm hoping that although the president has rather upset me over the last week, he actually follows through on what he's saying he's going to do to the Tech Titans this week. And if he does, you'll find exactly why it's so critical. We immediately move off those platforms or else you're going to touch base with everybody who's important to you. Now back to our broadcast. Let's listen to a little bit more of what uh, Representative Crenshaw has to say. I stated on Twitter that maybe we should consider them at the state level. Maybe we should have a conversation about it, and it should be a conversation. Unfortunately, that's not what happened. What came out of it... I'm just going to save that for a second. So what did he say exactly? Down below, it says the solutions aren't obvious. Even if we pretend they are, but we must try. Let's start with the TAPS Act. Now it comes out again, black and white. Maybe also implement state red flag laws or gun violence restraining orders. Now, there's been another add to the overall vernacular happening. Stop them before they can hurt someone. And he references this bill, which is the T TAPS Act, H.R. 838, that I've covered in now two or three broadcasts, but this was the originating broadcast. This is Big Brother. This is precognitive law. This is coming and getting guns from anybody they determine that can be at risk. But don't worry, he gives many more clarifications trying to dig himself out of this huge hole he's now put himself in. Listen here further. Unfortunately, that's not what happened. What came out of it instead was hate-filled comments, lots of emotion, a lot of anger. Hate-filled comments. I love whenever you disagree, even though they say that the left is inciting hate and how dare the left incite hate. The minute they get some backlash, now all of a sudden their own supporters are hate. So you see now how it's everybody in Congress and everybody in Senate and everybody on Capitol Hill is now throwing around the word hate whenever somebody disagrees with them. And that is a serious, serious problem. But I'll let him continue. A lot of memes, uh, a lot of memes, by the way, which could be improved. Okay. I'm going to show you those memes as we move forward here. Some of them. But that's not the point. The, the, the point is 
is that clearly even the words red flag law just emotionally triggered a lot of people. Okay, we're going to stop there because why the severe backlash are is people not being fair? Well, let's go into when he was getting elected. Navy SEAL with glass eye and visions winning U.S. Congress seat. And what does he stay? Speaking to the zany gun control debate and elected officials grabbing for our lock, stock and barrels protected by the U.S. Constitution, Lieutenant Commander Crenshaw minces no words. He minced no words before becoming a representative. He states that regarding his Second Amendment stance, Democrats who don't understand how guns even work continue to propose frivolous and ineffective gun control legislation in Congress. We cannot allow the leftists to set the terms of the gun rights debate in this country. Many states have borderline unconstitutional gun laws, although you said you now want to add to them with red flag laws. We must do a better job of enforcing current laws, especially background checks, so the guns stay out of the wrong hands. But I will never allow the government. And we're just going to go. Let's make this a little bit larger. I will never allow the government to prevent law-abiding citizens from defending themselves. Then now why the call for red flag laws? Because of two senseless tragedies? Were you that easily turned? Here's some of the memes he's talking about. You just can preview this. I'm going to leave a link on justiceanight.com so you can view more of these just to see that basically the American people went crazy about this, went nuts. Went, remember, he's out of Texas. They don't mince no words about guns there. Shall not be infringed. Red flag law. X. Yeah, this was absolutely the Hindenburg crashing. This is what came out of those statements, and rightfully so. And there you see, you are working for lifelong Texans who must defend themselves from illegal criminals infiltrating through the border. Shootings, and then I'm not going to repeat that statement. That's obviously going to be a huge red flag on my channel. But nonetheless, our rights shall not be infringed. So he caught amazing backlash after Dan Crenshaw calls for red flag laws and loses support from conservatives. He sets the record straight. This is the last and final video I'll ever do on the topic. How dare you question me? But let's listen to him further. The, the, the point is is that clearly even the words red flag law just emotionally triggered a lot of people. Made yeah, you guys me too. really mad at me. And uh, it seemed that no amount of explanation was able to quell your fears or, or convince you otherwise and convince you that somehow the president and I had not betrayed you. Somehow convinced the president and I have not betrayed you. Red flag laws are just, they're just emotional. And how dare you are all overreacting. I mean, it's simple here. Red flag laws allow guns to be taken from, you know, dangerous people. But we're going to change that. We're going we're, we're gonna to do it different than the Democrats do because a red flag law for, for the conservatives is different than a red flag law for the Democrats. If you buy that line of BS, then you might as well just let them take your guns. How do the laws work? Red flag laws, risk protection orders, which in general allow law enforcement and in some cases family members. By the way, many of these are already on the books. There's already legislations and rules to take away guns who, from people who go through due process due to actions that people already have in the books. Why do we need additional, it even says here, a judge to temporarily remove guns from anyone who the judge determines poses a danger to themselves or others. Judges can issue a temporary or emergency order to intervene in moments of an immediate crisis or a threat or a long-term order for individuals deemed to present an ongoing risk. In rulings on risk protection orders, judges are asked to consider evidence of threats, violent behavior, mental health issues, a conviction from domestic violence and other factors. Emergency orders can last for two or three weeks to remove guns from a longer period, generally for up to a year, the court has to set a hearing, offering the person an opportunity to argue their case. So if these laws, these red flag laws already exist on many states, then why are we readdressing them? Clearly, when we say red flag laws, you guys stop listening. You can't hear what we're suggesting. Um, because understandably, you automatically assume that we are just agreeing with the left's version of of that law. And we all know that the left's version would not be good. It would not protect due process. But as it turns out, that isn't what we're talking about at all. Um, at its heart, what we're talking about is the ability to confiscate weapons when there is clear evidence that violence is about to be committed. It's that simple. And this isn't that controversial. What is controversial is... No, it's extremely controversial. It's extremely controversial. It is extremely controversial. 
Representative Crenshaw. How that due process is protected, and I think that's where a lot of these concerns are. Making sure that due process could not be abused is at the heart of any conservative solution to the supposed red flag laws and our version of what those would look like. I have laid out specific safeguards that would have to be in place for us to support any type of red flag law. Okay, among them would be clear and convincing evidence, punishment for false accusations, right to attorney and cross-examination, and limited standing so that not just anybody can accuse you. For instance, not just a neighbor, not just an ex. It has to be somebody with standing, maybe a family member or maybe only police officers. Who your ex or your ex-family member would report your infraction to. You see, it's going to weaponize everything because if somebody disagrees with you, a simple phone call to the authorized party that he so represents, i.e. a police officer, would be fine. Wow, how do I get around my own double talk right now? Well, it's called impossible because there's truth about gun violence in America. This was on the Epic Times, very well written article. They also don't tell you, despite the Pavlonia response to call for banning assault weapons or military style rifles, according to FBI stats for 2017, handguns actually compose, uh, comprise 64% of the firearms used in murder and non negligent manslaughter incidents. As they mischaracterize the true nature of firearm deaths in the United States, for instance, although there were 40,000, let's just say 40,000 deaths in 2017, according to the CDC, 60% of those were from suicide. 37% were from homicides. If you were to take the Los Angeles Police Department, for example, about 70-80% of those homicides were gang-related. Additionally, about 500 gun deaths were unintentional, and another 800 were justifiable homicides. Based on that data, roughly 85 to 90 percent, let's say, of gun-related deaths in the United States are likely caused by suicide or gang violence. 85 to 90 percent. So all these red flag laws, due to two horrific tragedies by two people, will result in the removal of firearms from the mass amounts of American people to plan all along, obviously, the agenda all along, when we are actually one firearm death per 100,000 people in the United States every year, making the United States among the lowest in the world for per capita firearm deaths. Those are the statistics you need to know before we just sit back and allow, now it appears, both parties to go ahead and implement more laws against you and I and our country. But let's let him finish, shall we? I understand your fears about bad red flag laws. Red flag law is a general concept. There can be good ones and there can be bad ones. You should be against the bad ones, as I am. The whole purpose of what the... And Representative Crenshaw, it's the fact that we don't trust anybody within our government once a law is put in place to interpret what's good and bad. You have shown us no ability whatsoever as a whole to represent the American people for the good. It just continues to infringe on our rights and our liberties. So then why would we allow you more power to take away more ability of the American people, more rights and liberties, because you said we shouldn't fear we shouldn't fear the good laws. We should only fear the bad ones because we're going to put that in your hands to represent to us what's good and bad. <laughs> ah, that's one of the most laughable statements I've heard in some time. The president did, and what I am doing in trying to start a conversation about this is so that we take control of the narrative and propose solutions that actually do protect due process rights. Take control of the narrative, a very key for statement there. For us, the president and I, to take control of the narrative. Listen to that very carefully. And ensure that we aren't on the sidelines when Democrats are proposing blatantly unconstitutional laws. Isn't a red flag law blatantly unconstitutional in itself? When there's already laws within the Constitution that would take handguns away from those or within the state laws that would take handguns away from those, i.e. convicted felons? then why the addition now rather than education? That would not protect due process. The last thing is this. No one is saying this is definitely the solution. It's a conversation. I haven't come out in support of any particular bill or state law. It's a conversation. 
backpedaling. That's Dan Crenshaw backpedaling as much as he could because he realized that the American people are still loud, strong, and proud. That's right. We're going to step in when we disagree with something, just like I did last week and just like we're doing now. Station that conservatives have actually been having for a very long time. It's not new at all. And it definitely does not deserve the emotional reaction it has gotten. We are better than that. It 100% deserves the emotional reaction it's gotten. It 100% deserves it. And how dare you, Representative Dan Crenshaw, look down your nose at me and the American citizen to tell us otherwise. Condescending to us as if we don't understand the basics of the Constitution. We don't understand the principles by what this country was founded for and in. How dare you question us? You represent us. You don't rule us. And that's the problem with you and everybody else that sits up on Capitol Hill at this moment. You've forgotten that you represent us. You don't rule us. For once, don't condescend. Because now my position on you has completely changed after this speech, this condescending speech. You lost the support. And that's just the way it goes. So until next time, I want to thank each of you for being here. If you feel as emotionally about this as I do, please make sure your comments are below. Subscribe and make sure the bell is checked because it does you no good if you're subscribed to me. But the bell isn't checked because you're not alerted to new broadcasts. So until next time, once again, my name is Justice Knight. I can't thank you enough for being here. Godspeed and God bless. And we got a lot to cover this week. So just hold on.